Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by Ring, Hymns, and HelloFresh. I'm Gus. I'm Chris. I'm Barbara. Hey, Jeff. And Gus. Um, I had something weird happen the other day. Okay. <laughs> I have a story, too, but I want to hear yours first. Um, my, I, I had to take my dog to the dog emergency room. Uh, there's a dog emergency room? There's a dog room? emergency room. How did it, you, really? You didn't know that? No. Yeah. I've never had a dog. Dogs Is that like at a normal vet or like a hospital? It's like, animal hospital. It's like, well, yeah, animal hospital, essentially. Wow. It was, Do uh, they have little stretchers? Little dogs? <laughs> they, oh don't, they don't. But uh, I guess like my they dog, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how it happened. Doctors? But doctors. he ripped out one of his claws. I bet that was a lot of blood. That was a fuck ton of blood. And the way you realize that that has happened is you look at your dog and he's fine. You look away and you look back and he's half covered in blood. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> is he just like looking at you dripping? He was so happy. He was like in such a good mood. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Did he eat a little bit of dog in game night? <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> I recently found out about something. I have some friends that have a Great Dane. I've always wanted a Great Dane. You guys ever owned a Great Dane or know anybody that has one? You did, right? No, I never had one. I had a St. Bernard. I never oh, had a Great Dane. That's what I was thinking about. Great a dog Danes that was very big. have this thing called Happy Tail. Where their tails wag like crazy, but they wag so hard that they pop it. Ooh. And it like if it hits something hard enough, it creates like gushing blood wounds. Ooh. And they're like, if you get happy tail, they just like splurt blood like a horror movie. And they have to like wrap the whole tail up and it's excruciating. So it's not like internal? No, bleeding? yeah. And it's like it's like a crime scene amount of blood anytime they wag their tail if it hits something. Yeah. And Ooh. then it's wagging, yeah. so it's just like, it's like a everywhere. hose. Yeah. yeah I, uh, it is like a yeah, it's like a hose. I showed up to the doggy emergency room and you know. There's blood everywhere, and the nurse very calmly gets like she's got like a little earpiece and a walkie-talkie. She very calmly goes, "We need a we have a level one triage." Out here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> level one triage! <laughs> like people like start coming out from the back, and uh, I'm like, it's okay. "I think he just pulled his claw out." <laughs> and they like take him to the back and like do whatever to like investigate and make sure he's okay. Now I'm really picturing him on a little dog stretcher. I really want the little the, like <laughs> the tiny little thing. They have a little like ivy in his little arm. <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 crazy. It was like it's a little dog. It's a lot of blood. How did he I do can't that imagine. to himself? Huh? How did he do that? It probably himself? got caught in something. Yeah. And while he was running, is that that's out. equivalent to losing a finger? Fingernail. Right? Fingernail. Yeah. Fingernail. Fingernail. Yeah. Well, but they don't have fingers. Do they? Like I said. <laughs> <laughs> now they got Jesus Christ. <laughs> Earlier today, how, how, you... what is what is the makeup of a dog paw, Chris? In your mind? Okay, they got fingers. All right. <laughs> it was like a like stump with little claws. With They're not Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stump with yeah, five daggers. You know. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like yeah, yeah. stump daggers. <laughs> uh -huh. We have a level one triage on the this dog stump daggers. Stump daggers. <laughs> Earlier today, Chris, when I when you sat down, you said, "Oh, Jeff." Uh, a, you said you complimented me, which was lovely. Thank you. Uh, but B, you were like, "I feel like it's been a while since I've talked to you." And now I remember why. <laughs> it's been a while since we've talked. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you're forced to do it now mm -hmm. for the next hour and a half. Yeah, maybe less. Hour he, 25. He, he might take off. Mm. I do. I tend to leave. This one you can't. You can. don't, don't, see, I can see the door. <laughs> let me tell you something. You should know better by now, Barbara. You can never tell Jeff what he can't do. I mean, you absolutely can do whatever you want, Jeff. You're a man of free will. Eric Bedore wanted him to sit in that chair before we started the podcast because he was sitting over here at first. Who cares? Uh, yeah, and Jeff. Yeah, who does care? Jeff did not want to move. I moved, and here's why I moved. I like Eric. Thank you. I like Eric, and I. You, you hear that defeat in his voice? Yeah. Like he's had a bad day. You could you could tell you look at Eric and immediately know We're like here. Don't fuck with Eric today. Today's been a bad day for him. He's the, he's defeated by something else. Has it been a bad day? I don't want to pile on. It's just been it's been a long life. <laughs> a long uh, life. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I feel that. It, 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 the, the good news is it only gets longer. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it, it only keeps going. Wait. Well, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, checks out. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're okay. great, Chris. Um, <laughs> did you all see that fucking video that came out last week of that? Woman being rescued by the helicopter. Oh my god! Just spinning, the spinning yeah. old lady. <laughs> oh, was, like, oh, that was a that was a person. It was a seventy-four year old woman. Yeah, she got like lot. Oh, she was injured hiking or something like that. Yeah, she fell and like broke her nose and injured her leg. And now she has uh, liquid brain. She's still she dizzy. No. Yeah, no, she is still dizzy. I read a follow-up story about it earlier today. 
but she hasn't been able to. She still hasn't been able to regain her balance to walk. The only way to fix her is to take her back up and spin the other way. <laughs> they gotta undo it. You know what? The best part of that video is if you watch it upside down, it looks like she's rescuing the helicopter. <laughs> I want to see that video, but stabilized, stabilized on her. On her where yeah. She's not moving. The whole video is just spinning around. It's like. It's her and the propellers are sitting still, and it's the, the <laughs> helicopter in the middle. Yeah. It's, it's like the, uh, that episode of The Simpsons where uh, Homer falls oh, off the yeah. cliff, and they're yeah. picking him up, and he, they hit him on every rock, yeah, and then that's exactly him. what I thought about when I saw but that video, he too. he was spinning at 100 RPM, though, or... Did Jesus. they, how how fast was she spinning? Is I have no right? idea. No, I, I pulled that number out of my ass, but that, it got pretty fucking fast. Like, at first, you're like, oh, I bet that sucks. <laughs> that's kind of sad. And then it just, like, gets it, faster and, and it faster. And it keeps going. Like it, it, what is it, like five minutes or something that she's spinning? I don't know for? how long it was, but it was definitely a what few minutes. What happened that made her spin? I don't know. The helicopter fucked up, <laughs> is the technical term, I believe. Uh, when they were picking her up, and they did something wrong, and they were unable to stabilize, and it just made her spin, and every movement the helicopter made just made her spin more. I think it, like, tried to lower uh, it, but that made it spin faster, uh, yeah, and then up eventually again. Eventually, like they had to, like... They fixed it by moving forward and down, and that was able to straighten her out. But at that point, she was already scrambled eggs. <laughs> oh my god! I wonder what yeah. she was saying or thinking when that was happening. Yeah, first, Whoa. it was thank, thank God I'm saved, and then fuck, Whoa. fuck, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I think the article I read, they did an interview with her. Said that she was just trying to focus on breathing exercises. Yeah. <laughs> god, it's like all the—I mean, all the blood in her body was going to like her head. Yeah. So probably, she probably had a headache for. Quite a while. She probably still does. She probably still does. <laughs> I've been informed by Millie Ramsey that we we suck at TikTok. By the way, we do. She's off camera uh, well, judging us. The person us. who made it's right next to you. Yeah, that's really an awkward thing to say. <laughs> yeah, that's rude, Millie. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It's like I, it'll take me a while to figure it out. Every every time this new social media thing, it's like I don't I don't understand how it works. It'll it'll take me a little bit. Can I, I know you uh, you always operate these podcasts with a, a bullet a bulleted agenda and stuff. Uh, so I don't know when uh, if it, can I segue in. Do whatever you want. I this, this is ju this is just if there's a lull, I bring one of these up. Okay. So uh, back in my day when I would do the RT podcast, we talked about Austin restaurants all the time. You texted me earlier that a uh, local hamburger establishment's closing down. Huts I had hamburgers. read earlier about it. Do you give a shit? Huts hamburgers. Huts hamburgers. It's on West Sixth. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you care at all? No, I haven't been a Hudson I don't years. think you, I don't remember you being a fan. It was okay. It was, it's so there's, mediocre. There's so many other better burgers in Austin. Yeah. What, I, what place would you be bummed out if it did close? Which burger place? Bur Hilbert's. Hilbert's I Hilbert's? would be super sad about. I would be sad if, uh. Mighty Fine. Um, Mighty Fine's good. The, the one what's, on, a, what's a place on a Burnett? Uh. Top Notch? Top Notch. Close they down. almost closed. They almost closed, but they're still around. Yeah. What the, the one on 6th, uh, what, or 7th? Huts? No, the <laughs> no eighth, ninth, yeah, uh, right by the convention center. The hamburger trailer. The hamburger, no, no, the hamburger bar, bar slash restaurant. Oh, the one that's like attached to the JW. No. Oh, you mean Huts? No, it's not Huts. <laughs> the you mean bar, the hamburger, or whatever? Is it on Camino? Camino? Camino. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, you know, right next to the convention center. That's right by the convention. It's, oh, it's Sixth on Street, six. dickhead. It's, it's, six. Six. Okay. Right. it's in well, the vicinity near the convention. Casino is not the same as it used to be. They the did change their menu a lot. The one and only time I've been to Casino El Camino is with you. Only one time? Yep. Really? Casino's also. Yeah, I've, I haven't gone back. I want to. I just like I never think about it. It's, it's also downtown. a bar. I don't consider it a hamburger restaurant. They've yeah. got food, yeah. but they got good burgers. They, they do have they great do. burgers. I feel yeah. like though, like going downtown is a process, and so whenever I want to go downtown to eat. I don't think of going to Casino El Camino. I know it sounds. I agree. I, I don't think of going there because parking is a pain in the ass. Yeah, around there. Exactly. Yeah. I um. It didn't used to be. You used to be able to just pull up and park outside. Uh, you know, back in my day. I remember those days. Yeah, but th th those days are gone. Um, but yeah, I don't. I know it sounds rude because like you and I love Austin. We both have. Mm -hmm. You know, bonded over our love of the city. Been here and for a long time. We, we and I used to joke that we wanted to be the old dudes at the hair place we used to get our hair cut that are bitching. They were bitching about when not 35 came in. It's so a place over on Old Tour. Yeah, that, was, that place is going to be gone. They're going to demolish that, yeah, right? Yeah, that whole thing's going away. Um, but, and Huts is an Austin institution that's been around for probably 70 years. But it just wasn't good. Yeah. No. And, I, and it's like, it's wasted real estate. Yeah. Like, they could put a really cool they're, building there or something. They're also closing that liquor store right down the street from it, Favorite Package Store, mm -hmm. which was the first liquor store I ever bought liquor at when I turned 21. Are you serious? Yeah. You should go buy some before and, it closes. And we bought, actually, you and I went there. We bought that room there that when our, our studio used to be downtown. 
Yes. And then we walked back. That was uh, yes. Yeah, we walked back up to the to the studio on on That's uh, a Congress. Cute little liquor store. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't, funny. I don't remember the first time I bought alcohol, but I do remember when I turned eighteen. I was like, I went and bought you, porn. Uh huh. And a lotto ticket. And what else can you do when you're 18? I join the army. Join yeah. the army. Yeah. I joined the army. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you could, and you voted. I, well, yeah. I did register for the draft, so I did do that. I couldn't vote. Do that you still day. have to do that? Is that something the kids yeah. still do? Yeah. yeah. When you turn 18. Yeah. yeah. Wait, do you what? think kids know that? What is that? You, you have to register you have to for register selective for service yeah. for sele- at just the post in the office. States? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it's in case they do a draft, but they haven't done a draft since Vietnam. Yeah. I didn't have to register because I was already in the military at that point. But yeah, it's something you, like, you showed them. I showed yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, joined, I joined last year. You, you, you found the loophole. Uh, I don't know if they registered for selective service. Yeah. I just registered for service. They can't draft you if you draft yourself. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know though. It, it, do you know that Millie? When you turn eighteen, you have to go to the post office once. She does not look happy about it. Okay, she well, good talk. She, 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 or I'm really happy here. about it. One <laughs> of the two. It's a long I'm, life, Millie. I'm pretty sure I woke her up. She's having an Eric Bardor day. Yeah, so she's having an Eric. Yeah. Did you call him Eric Bardor? Bardor is what I call him. I'm sure he loves that. I know he does. I, everything I do is designed to annoy him. <laughs> <laughs> so you, the, the, a haircut place closed and you were sad about it? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 that place changed a lot. Since the the time that you're talking about, the time yeah, that it's been, I about. haven't been there in years and, and years. Uh, it's it's over there at Old Torf, Old Torf, and, Torf and Congress. Congress. You know, uh, catty corner to the H E B. What do they call it? The Twin Oaks Shopping Center. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I used to be a good restaurant there. We used to go to. Do you remember what it was Tamale called? Tamale House. No, it wasn't Tamale House. It was like Tia Rosa's. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That place. Do you have loyalty to a barber shop or haircut place? Like, I, is there I, like a place you always go to? I used to, but not anymore. I just. I, I take whatever's available at this point. Yeah. yeah, I got my hair cut by my ex-wife for twelve years, and now I date uh, a hairstylist. So, I, oh. yeah, I haven't had to. I haven't had to venture out into the. Yeah, apparently, I haven't had to venture out into the world of oh, paying man. for haircuts in a long time. That's pretty sweet. That's yeah. very sweet. Although, if you're a dude, I mean, what, you just get trimmed up. It ain't right? hard. It, yeah. yeah, it doesn't I, matter. That's I, why yeah. I don't. I don't have. Any, I'm just like whatever's yeah. closest. Like I'll do. I like, know Trevor has like a. a a gal he goes to because he likes the way that she does his particular haircut. But if I think you're just getting things like trimmed up. I think most guys don't even know how to know what to ask what they want their barber to do. Just bring a picture. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, that. I will say this: don't get it. Go. Don't go get a haircut at a place right before they're closing, because they will not give you a good haircut. They will rush you through. They will be. Because I I went to get a haircut like a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You can't tell at this point, but no, it looks good actually. Yeah, it looks great. She's thanks. Lying. But, well, that's because I've been doing my own trims in between. Yeah. yeah. Because I went to go get a haircut, and they were like, like it was, they were like 20 minutes from closing, and my haircut takes like five minutes. Yeah. But the dude was like, uh, how's that? I'm like, well, could you cut like the back? Oh and he's like, and he, I had to ask him for every section of my hair to get cut. <laughs> and I was like, ah. and then and then when I finished, I was like, I, at this point, I was just like, I, I felt like I was asking for every little thing or you could tell he was just like just every pl- hair. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, could you cut this side as well as this side? Oh you should God. come with like a phrenology picture and be like, can you cut the wisdom section now? Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. you, did you do on we you missed on we what uh, do you mind if I ask where it was? Uh, Great clips okay. or super oh. clips. Oh. That's or, your problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I don't care, but it's whatever. Yeah, Normally it's fine because my hair is like Basic dude hair. Have right? you guys ever been to Birds Barbershop? Yeah, I've never been. Yeah, so I've had like pretty okay. They give you beer, there. don't they? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They get they, they have beer and stuff like that. that. No, they don't have great yeah. clips. <laughs> <laughs> they but should. But they pass though. the savings on to you. I feel like they should yeah. give you beer at great clips because so you get drunk before you could notice the terrible well, haircut the, they gave the, you. The guy who gave me the haircut might have been. Drunk. It might have been. But uh, I went into a, a Birds one time because I just wanted like a trim and for. A lot of girls watch and know that if you're trying to grow your hair out and you get a trim, it's like take off the least amount of hair possible because I just want it to make it healthy again. Right. You want to cut the split ends off or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, so it can Even encourage it all growth. Out. And uh, so I go in and, and this guy, he it's like not appointment at birds. So you just like walk in and that's all they do. And uh, he's like, okay, um, how short do you want it? I was like, I literally just want like the least amount you could cut off. I just want to trim just to get rid of the split ends. He's like, okay. He like starts pulling my hair forward. It's dry and it's curly. And he starts pulling it forward and he like starts pulling it like this and then he just starts cutting. And I'm like, um, do you not um, wet the hair before you cut it? He goes, oh no, I like to cu- cut my clients dry. It's like, okay. He cut off probably three or four inches of my hair. Wow. And because it was curly and so it bounced up. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. 
and uh, I was not very happy. That doesn't sound like a good cut. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna think it was that great clips. If you're a person <laughs> with long hair, be it be it a girl or a guy, uh, where like hair probably hair cut like cut and style matters, mm -hmm. I you probably shouldn't go anywhere that doesn't require appointments. I I realized that after the fact. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm curious about something. All this talk of barbershops and haircuts and everything, Chris. Yeah. When you go to the barbershop, what do you tell them to do? Oh. <laughs> like you just sat down in the chair, barber, you know, putting the, the cape around you. He goes, all right, uh, what do you, what what, what do you want? Today? What are we doing? I'm gonna be like, well, I want like maybe like a month off. <laughs> a month off? <laughs> About a month off. And then I'll say, but can you make it like extra short in the back so it doesn't get like a uh, mullity? And then, um, and then make it not look like I got a haircut. Okay. That's a lot of conflicting information. Why there. would you want it to not look like you got? Well, because you know what? I'm, okay, there's this thing where when dudes get a haircut, it's like almost mm. like too cleaned up, where it looks like oh yeah, he got it. It looks bad so for like a week. You want it a little dirty around a the ears? A little dirty, a little yeah, like a little not, grown out. A little, a little grown out. Yeah. So okay. how much does your hair grow in a month, Chris? I don't know. I always just say that. Because I don't want it too much off. So you don't say like I just want it kind of like cleaned up and trimmed up or anything like that. Sometimes I don't know. I, I just like mumble until they you start mumble cutting. directions to the <laughs> barber <laughs> until oh, they start cutting. Oh, I'm wow. just like just like not too much off. So your philosophy on hair cutting is your philosophy on everything in life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just mumble through it. It seems to be working out Hope well. Hope they you. figure out what he yeah. wants. Yeah, pretty much. What do you guys say when you go get your hair cut? Um. Uh, no. Normally what I say is uh, I want a scissor cut all the way around and take about half an inch off. Scissor cut as opposed to a... As opposed to using... Razor? The blades. That's a really good... The blade guards. All right, someone just commented on the chat. Always tell them that you're going to a wedding that weekend so that they put extra care into it. There you go. That is a really oh. good, good call. suggestion. Yeah, yeah Peter Very H. Smart. In I forgot that you all can Peter see the chat over here. Peter Hayes was saying that uh, he, was, he was curious because you didn't bring up like the numbers, like blade guard numbers. Do you know what those are? I do. I, I, I don't... I don't like keep you, up with that. You don't look like you, you probably use a guard with your hair as long it, as it, it is. Nah. It, it, cha it changes all the time. <laughs> it's, a, it's one of those things you got to be on Reddit. You're checking the subreddits all the time. What's the current preferred guard length? It's ugh, it's annoying. Yeah, you don't yeah. Keep up. it's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, it changes. It's like trying to keep time. up with baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Have time. Each number is a quarter inch. Okay, well, yeah, I don't really do that. I do have a. I do actually have. You a just mumble. I do have. Just a, start mumbling. I numbers. do have a razor of my own, but I, <laughs> that's for your fucking hair? brag about it. Not for my well, it's more of a what's it for? Is it for a like, manscaping? Yeah, yeah, yeah manscaping. You use a razor to manscape? Yeah, it's got its own guard. <laughs> I don't like a trimmer. A trimmer. Okay, a razor. I'm picturing like a straight razor, dude. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, like no. that you use no, to no, shave no. your face. Yeah. No way. No, no. I do not trust myself with that. You, you shouldn't run with those. No. What do you guys use to to trim yourselves, or do you just fully shave? Like you mean like dick and stuff? Yeah. I ball. use a, I use a, like a shaver, like one of those, like, you know, like, oh, it's the same thing I use for my yeah. beard. I also use it on my pubes sometimes. The same one? Yeah. Yeah. So exactly you, same one. you just go, it's all off. It's uh, like no, I just trunk. like, I like, I like, go like, eh, it seems like, sorry, sweetie, that seems, this seems like about enough, you know, <laughs> and you like go around. Okay. But then those things are like, oh God, I, have, I got ball issues right now anyway, but uh, you don't want to get too close to the skin because those things will nick you hard. Yeah. And that hurts. And then a, a, a testicle will bleed like a motherfucker. It'll bleed like a dog. Like a dog. Like yeah, a dog. Like a dog, like a, a dog bleed. A happy, a happy, uh, what do you call that? Happy swap? Or <laughs> happy, happy tail. Happy, happy, happy tail. tail. Yeah, you get I made a mistake when I was uh, younger and I was trying to trim my nether regions and I was using like an actual scissor. Yeah. And so when it's long enough, you can do this thing where you pull and twist and then cut. So you get like kind of like a chunk of hair and yeah. then twist it. I wasn't paying close enough attention, oh, no. and I like kind of nicked my skin Female just circumcision? a just a little bit. And it luckily was not like on the clit, but like oh. <laughs> it was close by. <sighs> and I was bleeding there for like a day or two. I've yeah, done that. that. The blood didn't clit up. <laughs> that, was, that was good. I like that one. Was it though? I got a so guess. I got a story. I think I, I was debating on whether I should tell it here or save it for off topic or save it for down the road. I'll do it here, but Whatever. I'll just do it here because I'm not good at holding stuff back. And you brought up uh, genitals um, and true. genital pain. I discovered a new kind of genital pain that I'm surprised it took me 43 years to get to. Um, and now that I'm there, I will in endeavor to never experience it again for as long as I live. 
Um, but the other night I was cutting jalapenos. Oh my god. Oh no, no, no. no. And I have rubbed my eyes. I have gotten jalapeno in my no inside your nose is really bad. Yeah. I've got it on my mouth. I've gotten jalapeno juice everywhere. Well, in the mouth, not so bad. I have never apparently cut jalapenos and then immediately went and peed. <laughs> but I did the other night. <sighs> and it hit me in waves because I panicked so bad that I started to try to clean my genitals, my penis and my balls, as it were. And uh, after, I, after I survived the first wave of intense burning, I discovered a second wave, because uh, I hadn't properly cleaned my hand, so I just reapplied oh, no. jalapeno oh, no. juice. So I was Googling like a motherfucker, uh, because it was too much to take. Like, I gotta cut my dick off because I can't take this pain. <laughs> like, just dip your dick in milk? So the preferred me everything I read is that the best thing you can do for an, a jalapeno Dick. inflamed penis and balls is to dip them in milk. Oh, really? Yeah. So I had to do this with well, I, I try to hide from Millie while I was doing this. And now you're telling um, the story. And I, uh, yeah, I spent 20 minutes Saturday night with my dick. And my balls mm -hmm. submerged in a glass of milk in my bathroom, going, please work, please work, please work, please work. <laughs> Worst pain I have wow. maybe ever felt in my entire life. How uh, how thick was the glass? <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what? It was it was a big gulp. Was, what, it, uh, was it whole milk or two percent or what? <laughs> it was two Millie, what kind of milk did we buy? <laughs> Did you put what two percent? I think it's two percent. What, what, what did you do with the milk? Yeah, what cereal did, did you have afterwards? <laughs> Millie had fruit loops, but I don't think <laughs> <laughs> it was uh Something's weird about this milk. It's spicy, yeah. but also well, you're supposed I to have, have warm milk before bed. So even as a joke, a while back, we somebody sent us some. Uh, somebody sent us to Awu. They sent us some Tiger Bomb, and I just took it and I rubbed it on my balls in a video, which hurt like hell. But that's a manageable level of pain. If you ever want to know how bad jalapeno juice on a penis feels, uh, put some Tiger Bomb or icy hot on your balls, and then imagine it. 30 times worse. That much worse. It was so bad. What Gus, is Tiger I was Bomb? crying. It hurt so bad. Tiger Bomb is what? Tiger Bomb's like icy hot. You like rub it on a sore muscle or something. And it like oh my burns. God, you put that on your balls? Yeah, that's nothing compared to jalapeno. <laughs> it was, I was like, I literally was thinking like, I, I remember reading one time about some sort of a, like a crustacean that if it, uh, like in the ocean, that if it attack if, if it cuts you, it hurts so bad you want to cut your arm off mm -hmm. because that's oh, yeah, less yeah. painful than that. Yeah. I was like in a, I read it in like a John Steinbeck book, like The Pearl or something. And uh, and I was actually thinking like I could see cutting my genitals off to get away from this pain because it is like it's a fury that's visited upon you in a sensitive place like I've never experienced. Is it like a radiating kind of pain? Like how would you describe it? Pointed and um, all encompassing. Like I had. It, it was, I, my brain had no had no spare bandwidth to think of anything other than the pain in front of me. It was it was uh, excruciating. Oh my god! I don't know if anybody in the chat's ever done that. You put jalapeno juice on your dick, but give it a shot. Don't do it. Why not? Anyway, <laughs> so I that's so terrible. I have now. Uh, I won't tell you which glass, but if you come over to my house, one of the classes has had my dick in it for a while. <laughs> I feel like some people at this company would be able to guess <laughs> just based <laughs> on your interactions with them. <laughs> Did glass. you mark it? Is it like a special one now? No, it was clear glass. Like I have no idea which one it was. A glass half full kind of guy, but... In the well, best. I was going to say, I was actually <laughs> trying to think of dumb jokes and stuff. And uh, In that instance, I don't like milk. Milk did my body good. It took that pain away. Yeah. So it felt better after. Yeah. It, no, it, it super helped. It, like, literally, I've never... Uh, since I hate milk, I don't ever... Like, people are like, oh, if it's too hot, you know, like, ghost pepper, whatever, drink milk. I never do it because mm -hmm. I just can't stand milk. Yeah. Like, I'd rather deal with the pain than the gross taste of disgusting milk. But uh, applied to the nether to the genitals, it's cool. Were, were you at my apartment that one time years ago when I lived off of Pleasant Valley when my neighbors knocked on my door? We I were think of where you lived off of Pleasant at the Valley. Metropolis. Oh, the prostitute place. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember one time I was at my apartment. I don't know if you were there at I this time. You might have been, this. but uh, I was sitting in my living room and uh, someone knocked on my door. I'm, like, I'm not expecting anybody, so I go over and I open it. And uh, it's like two of my neighbors who I'd never met. They lived like kind of down a little bit and uh, they were like, hey uh, My friend's gonna eat a bunch of habanero peppers in the courtyard. You want <laughs> you want to come watch? <laughs> yeah, and I was like oh, Sure, why not? I'm not doing anything. It was just like soliciting neighbors to come and watch It was it was exactly what you expect the dude was just like he ate a whole like a whole bunch of habaneros and was just like 
tearing up and crying. And the reason I thought about it is he had like two one gallon jugs of milk there as well. And we're just like pouring them over his face. Was it being filmed? Or no, what? this is before internet. Yeah. So just doing this it. Was, this was like 1999. Like oh smartphones God. didn't exist. <laughs> so that's He's like, I gotta get the neighbors. This was like Saturday. It was like, yeah, I guess that's kind of like if you put a video online, like just entertaining a bunch of strangers. Like, yeah. let's just get a bunch of strangers in person. Yeah, and show so them. you have to round them up in person. Oh, that was God. back when we used to do stuff just because it was fun. Yeah, you remember that? Those are oh. the days, man. Instead of just doing it to be filmed. My 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 that that apartment complex was weird because you. I don't know if it's this way anymore. I, I have no idea. I've not lived in that apartment complex for twenty years. It was years a popular now, place though. But back then. You paid your phone and internet bill to the apartment complex because they had uh, like a deal with a local company where they had run internet. They'd run like you could plug in like Ethernet cables in your apartment, and it was high speed internet. And uh, we ha uh, so as a result, like sometimes the phone lines would get crossed. <laughs> I remember <laughs> so, this. Like, I could if I picked up my phone, I would hear dial tone, right? But behind the dial tone, I could hear my neighbor on the phone, or sometimes oh. my phone would ring. But it was really my neighbor's phone ringing, and I would pick it up, and nobody could hear me, but I could hear my neighbor's conversation. And, and my neighbor was a so drug dealer. <laughs> and so, like, all the time, it's like, hey, you want to hear what people are buying? Let's find out. It's like, you just pick up the phone. He's not kidding, dude. And it was like, because it would do this thing, it was like a half ring, where your phone, like, you knew it, it makes a noise, but yeah. it's not a full, you're like, did the phone yeah, like, just almost <laughs> ring? Yeah. Kind of like a muffled ring. Yeah. And you'd pick it up, and it, it would totally, Gus would be like, here, listen, he's making a drug deal right now. And you'd be, like, <laughs> and you'd be able to hear him, like, super clear? Yeah. yeah. It was like you were on the call. Oh, my God. Yeah. He was a... <laughs> He did a lot in of business. In high demand, too. Yeah, yeah. that guy. He his phone rang a lot. Should have blackmailed him for free drugs. Yeah, let me do that. Let me blackmail a fucking <laughs> drug dealer who lives next door to me. <laughs> let me get right on that. <laughs> Somebody in the chat said that uh, they worked at a restaurant and some new guy didn't put gloves on and cut jalapeno or habanero peppers and had to go to the emergency room because he blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From the pain. God, that is terrible. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, I, I loved when you lived at that apartment complex. That place was crazy. It was like it was where all the strippers and drug dealers in town lived, and it was like it was like an orgy of partying at all times outside. And Gus and that, in that his I room didn't playing. go to for the record. No, Gus didn't. No, he had to go through it to get to Starcraft, though. Of course. <laughs> Is that it where was, you got your uh, hemorrhoid? Yes, yeah. I got my first hemorrhoid there. Yeah, playing Rainbow Six. <laughs> yeah, you were sitting on the floor in your bedroom playing Rainbow Six and Brood War. I remember you were always playing Brood War. Yeah, I played yeah. that a lot. It was a. Uh, I had a roommate at the time, Frank, the yeah. D and D from Heroes, and, uh, the DM from Heroes and Halfwits. Frank and I lived together at the time, and uh, his room, whenever it rained, his room became like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. You remember the scene with all of the insects? Yeah. Oh like, God. I don't know where those insects all came from, but it's like if it <laughs> rained, it rained a lot. Like his room would just start, like insects would just start coming out from everywhere, and he'd have to sleep in the living room because it's like we'd have to close the door and be like, "All right, the insects." <laughs> They that's, their, that's their room now. This is their domain. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can have it. They're not paying rent, but it's okay. They're going to stay in there. When you finally moved out, Frank stayed there for a while, right? Like, yeah. did he get another roommate and yeah. kept stayed on for a while? No. I moved over to those uh, shitty apartments that don't exist anymore. They tore them down and built condos over over there now, off of uh, Lakeshore. Is that where you, that, that was the place where your, apart, your apartment was wet for a year? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it was just. Wet. Wet. I don't know. He's not, and he would deny it. I'd come over and I'd be like, is your floor wet? And he's like, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was the cheapest place. Like, it was my first time living alone, so I had to find, like, the cheapest apartment I could. Yeah. What was, <laughs> what did you pay? It was like 400 bucks a month or something. No, I want to say it was like 650. There's no way you paid that much for that place. Maybe Back 600. Then? Yeah. It was the scariest apartment complex I've ever spent time in. You you, as long as you didn't go out at night, it was okay. You always talked about how, like, my, with my first wife, you made a pro and con list about whether <laughs> it was worth being my friend because you disliked her so much. I kind of wow. had that with that apartment. That apartment was bad. That we, apartment was rough. We never hung out there, though. We, we played the Mario compromise. Party there twice, and I helped you move in, and that was. And I think at that point I was like, I can't. Had yeah. anything happened to you there? Uh-uh. Oh. No, it was fine. I guess you weren't out at night ever. Yeah, no. guess so you're fine. It was okay. Wet feet, but... Uh, it was a little humid. Humid. <laughs> oh, God. Do you, uh, has Miles ever told you about the apartment he used to live in? Before moving, I don't think so. They were doing construction on like the outside of the building where he was, and apparently they had like drilled holes into his apartment from the outside. So he just had like open holes all over his wall from the construction, <laughs> and they wouldn't do anything about it. Ventilation, like, yeah, free air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what? It, the apartment wasn't wet. I bet. 
Yeah, it's true. It had time to dry out. Very yeah. true. Yeah, it probably wasn't moist. Gus's first apartment he lived at when I met him was just as bad, if not worse. That was the Ooh. apartment where you went uphill going from your front door yeah. to your kitchen. That one was scary. Like a hike uphill. Yeah. It was from your front door to your every, kitchen. Every year, one building would burn down in that apartment complex. Yeah, and it, it was like you always hoped every year it wasn't your building that burned down. And, and it was never mine. When and when I say uphill, Barbara, I don't mean like there's no stairs or anything. His apartment was just on, on the piss. <laughs> it was slanted. like it, it was, was like a, it was a little slanted. It was like a room in Meow Wolf or something like that. If you put a marble on the floor, it would go down out the front door, down the hill, and into traffic. There was a was it on the ground floor? Yeah. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about my burning <laughs> car? No. <laughs> Did I ever tell you Okay. Well, so my first I car. I love the way you introduced. You look back at me like we've had a conversation in the last five years. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, I, my first car I had, I was in uh, West Campus when I was still in uh, college, and I parked on the side of the street. I think there was a um, an arsonist going around West Campus for a bit because there all these buildings kept catching fire. Yeah. And I I remember watching it from my window all the time. We'd just be like my, my be like, hey, another place is on fire. Cool. And we go watch. Cool. Uh, well, not cool, but you know what I mean. Like we'd be like, all right, let's go watch. Look cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. And so I remember there's one time. Oh, look, it's on fire again. It's like, wow, it's right next door to us. It was like, right over there. And I'm, so I'm watching it. And I go to my car the next day, and I'm like well, looking at the remains of the building, and, and then I'm like, my car's melted. Like one side of my car had melted down the entire side of it because where, it was near the building. Yeah, that was on fire? it was like I was parked next to the burning building. <gasps> And so all the plastic in my car had melted. Wow. And then all the paint had ch like chipped and cracked. And then so I I called my insurance and I was like, my car got melted. <laughs> you, so your car like it had a stroke on one side. I was like, yeah. <laughs> basically. And they were like, what? I was like, yeah. And I was like, he's like, well, how does insurance deal with that? Though? Well, they were like, I guess it's a natural disaster, is what the the guy on the phone said. Yeah. He was like unsure. I'm like, all right. And he's like, well, we'll come take a look. And the guy came out and he he was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's melted. And, <laughs> You're like, and then he's like, I mean, your car is not really a good like the val you don't have a it's not a high value car. Uh, what car? What kind of car was it? It was a uh, 1998 Ford Taurus. Okay. Uh, yeah. Classic. Yeah. Correct in that assessment. And uh, and it's he a was cop like, car. Yeah, yeah. Was and it? he he was like. Yeah, I think your car's totaled because to fix this would be more than the value of the car. And fix like, it. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's how do like, you, uh, you, you unmelt the well, car? Yeah. <laughs> They'd have to replace like half the car. Maybe they heat it up again and, and then so, remold it. it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, so you'll get like you know like five grand or something for your car. I'm like, damn. I'm like, that's not enough to get like a new car. Right. And so I was like, well, it's probably enough to get another 1998. Maybe, but then I, but then, so then I was like, well, could I keep it? Like, could I, any, could I like, and he was like, well, we'll have to subtract the value of the scrap costs, which is like a thousand dollars, but then we'll write you a check for the difference. So like four thousand dollars. Yeah. So you got a melted car and four thousand dollars? Four thousand dollars and a melted car. And I loved it. Chris. It was Chris. Awesome. Wait, what, what? do you Do keep you have it? photos of this melted car? I might. I actually, well, okay, so then a couple of years later, I, right before I started working <clears throat> here, I got hit by uh, uh, a guy pulling out of a bar, a drunk guy. Got hit on your melted car? On my melted car. Was it on the melted side or the not it melted? It was the melted okay. side, and that totaled it, it again. So I, I, I like made money off they of my- They paid you again? They told me, they paid me the full value of the car again. <laughs> I thought they didn't do that. I thought once it was like total, they gave you the money. That was it. So it's a no. good thing you kept that shit. Yeah. Cause you got it. I got it told twice. Wait, so yeah, I've never seen anyone so happy about getting their car totaled twice. So at that point, did you have to stop driving it? Oh yeah, yeah. It was really fucked up. Okay. It was melted and crashed. Like it was like <laughs> melted and crashed. It was. And so it's everything you don't want a car to be. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, but yeah, I was like, man, this is like, I don't know why more people are doing yeah. this. <laughs> Chris, I have a question. Yeah. Cause you went to UT, right? Yeah. I, uh, did, did you like live around campus and oh, do yeah. the whole f four year experience, that whole thing? Mm -hmm. Where did you live before you went to UT? In Longview, Texas. Okay. Yeah. So you've been here ever since. Yeah. Do you like wax nostalgic and go back to like West Campus and go to like look at the old places you used to live or eat at like the little restaurant that you used to go to and that kind of thing? I, I'll kind of whenever I'm driving through there, I kind of I reminisce. Do you? you know, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. There's a so and so. Oh, man, I remember when it used to be 
the so and so and like players or whatever. Yeah, but or, do you like go well, walking like, around there? Still, that's like about it. Yeah. You know, go walking around there. Though? I don't. Not. I mean. No, but if I am in that area, then I do reminisce. You I, know, I like, wonder about that because I have I ride my I used when I lived downtown. I'd ride my bike over there a lot. It's uh you like it's a great shot. There's a great bike lane on Rio Grande that goes all the way down. That's really easy to ride down, and everything looks brand new and like everything that's older than five years looks like it's been torn down over there. And I wonder if it's like for people that went to UT and like had that awesome college experience that they go back and they're like, where the fuck is this? Yeah, mm. yeah. All right, but it was uh, oh, go ahead. I, while I was in school, it was in that weird process of where they were tearing down all the houses and the like smaller places yeah. and building condos. So I saw that transition where mm -hmm. it went from like that area became like super city wide, like city industrial, like not industrial, but you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So I saw it happening. So then whenever I came back in like five years, like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Hmm. I have something I want to say about that. But first, uh, I want to read this thing. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Ring. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. You've probably seen their smart video doorbells and cameras to protect millions of people everywhere. Ring helps you stay connected to your home anywhere in the world. So if there's a package delivery or a surprise visitor, you'll get an alert and be able to see, hear, and speak to them all from your phone. Ring video doorbells can be hardwired or run off of batteries, so you can add a ring just about anywhere. Uh, the other day, I had someone unexpected show up at my door, and uh, I was like, I'm not expecting anyone. I answered it. It was some people trying to sell me something. I was like, no, go away. I'm up on them. Didn't, didn't have to go to the door. It's great. Awesome. Uh, just for you, we have a special offer on a Ring Starter Kit available right now with a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com slash teeth. That's ring.com slash teeth. The Ring Starter Kit can give you peace of mind you need when you're away from your home. Protect yourself and your home with the Ring Starter Kit. Get it now at ring.com slash teeth. That's ring.com slash teeth. Are you proud of me? I read it. I You did a great job. And I'll say, uh, I have that now because I bought a new house, you know, and mm -hmm. I now I finally am in the modern era and I have a Ring doorbell. It is so cool. Super convenient. Yeah. I, oh. Sometimes I'll look at it at the camera just to see what's going on in my front yard. Yeah. yeah. For no other reason. It's like, oh, that seems nice. Um, but talking about West Campus and how like how everything turns over, uh, I like going to open houses. Yeah, on the weekend. Uh, it's like I think I talked about it in the podcast. Still drunk sailing. One hundred percent done that. Too. No, not, not garage, not just garage open houses. Just open houses. But yeah, is you've it done because it. I think it's because I'm nosy. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I was, and I like looking at real estate. I'm curious, like how fun. other people like decorate their houses or layouts and stuff like that. But uh, do you have to lie about your why you're there? No, I mean I tell them. Like I'm not looking. Oh, I, I totally think of like a story before I go in. I don't I, like I don't an alter ego. Yeah, like oh I uh, you know I, I work for uh, the hospital and uh, me and my <laughs> husband are you know expecting and you should work on that story a little more. Yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds super believable. Yeah, uh, we but, work in hospital. Yeah, which hospital? <laughs> the, one, the one. Yeah, the big one. Ha but uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to look at a house that's kind of close to West Campus. It's like a uh, it's not really in West Campus, but it's on the edge of it. And uh, it turns out that, it well, well, I was driving there, and I guess this is the point of the story, and I passed by like this, it looked like a burned out husk of a building, and it had like three Greek letters on it. I guess it used to be like some frat house, and it like spray painted all over it, it says like no loitering. It's like, oh, well, they're obviously going to be tearing this down as part of like West Campus, they're probably going to build something else huge on it. But anyway, like two houses down from it was this open house, and it turns out it was Ann Richards' old house. Whoa! Yeah, that must have been a long time ago because she lived in the Nakona for the last decade or so. She was alive, I mm. think. Like it was on the, the 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 pamphlet. You know, they have like yeah. The well, she was around for a long time. Sheet. Was it a nice house? It was. It was interesting. It was. It was pretty nice. Uh, it was super dated. Was mm. it historically protected? No, probably no. No. How big was it? Do you think it's it, haunted? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it was like, but it had some creepy spaces in it. It was like thirty two hundred square feet. Oh, that's wow. pretty big. There were like crawl spaces like you could open like doors and hatches and like crawl under the house that's so, great and then there was like one room that was kind of like a crawl space that you had but it had like a washer and dryer in it i was like this seems like the scariest laundry room i've ever seen in my life like i you it, have to like tunnel in yeah, if i lived in this house i would never fucking set foot in there like one of the walls was unfinished it was just kind of like dirt Ugh. In, in like the crawl space laundry room area like the rest of the house was fine but that one room was like super creepy. Like what did uh, what did that house cost? Ann Richards' old house. She's a just so people know who may not be. She's the old governor of Texas. She was the governor of Texas. Yeah. Texas very popular. We loved her very much. I sat next to her on a plane once. She was super rude to me. Didn't didn't matter. Don't care. She was badass and she was great on King of the Hill. For the record, I look at 
really nice houses with no intention of buying. Sure, them. of course. As, as it was a one point three one point three million dollar okay, house. Yeah. Wow. But it, it needed a lot of work. I was wondering the other day because uh, I was reading about, something about Elizabeth Warren, and she went to UT Law School, I guess. <laughs> oh, she did. I wonder, like, where Elizabeth Warren apartmented in West Campus? Like, she must have, right? Like, she yeah. must have. Been, she like, lived in Riverside. She might have lived in Riverside. She might have lived by us back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Who's Elizabeth Warren? She uh, is a senator from Massachusetts who is running for president. She's the front runner. Right, for the I Democratic didn't even. Yeah. I, well, yeah. one is she of the front, front runners. My brain. I think she's the front runner. I don't oh, think her, her, or Bernie, Bernie, well, Bernie, and Bernie. Bernie and Biden, and her. It's like a, th but I think Biden's got it. You think? You so? think? Uh, currently, yeah. I think it, I think it's just name recognition right now. Mm -hmm. People but like there are twenty four fucking candidates. I think that's what oh it is. Not. I think it's just people Isn't who Beto don't keep. Running? He yeah. is, but he doesn't stand. I think, yeah, prayer. He needs to come back and run for he should state yeah. office. I think it's people keep asking. Well, not people keep asking, but I've been asked several times like, here around, just like by people that we work with. Like, oh, you know, you know, who's your favorite uh, person that's running for president? It's like it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, it, it like living in Texas, it doesn't matter. They're like they, you have no say in it here. It's like. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll pick someone by the time like we get to vote on anything. It's like it's already decided. It's already done by no, the time. I don't have that attitude though. We get anything around here. It's true. It's yeah, but you can't think that way. It's, only, it's, it's self defeating. What, what I always say is the only reason to have a preference is if you want to donate money to a political campaign. Yeah, and that, and this is the time where you could theoretically make a difference uh, or promote like just socially like yeah right. But we, our vote like on at that point. For the Democratic candidate, it'll be like mostly decided at that point. Yeah. I I wouldn't. I mean, I would honestly right now, if you're <clears throat> if you're gonna vote for the Democratic candidate or you're interested in it, I would just wait for the debate so they can winnow out all the. I mean, like, twenty four candidates ridiculous. You don't want to donate money to the wrong person if that's your thing. Yeah. Like let the thin the herd a little bit before and see yeah. who the actual candidates they're gonna that are gonna get past their their name recognition bump or whatever and see see who's left you, six months from now. Do you watch and what here watch last week tonight? Uh, yeah. Not religiously, but I yeah. do. Last night they had a, a segment where they talked about like who's going to be the next prime minister of the UK and like what that process is like. And I guess there's like they talked about like nine different candidates. And it's like when's the election? Uh, or when does that get? Decided? I don't know when they select it. I think it's going to be in a couple weeks. I think uh, Theresa May, her last day was officially last Friday, but I think she's staying on through the transition until they uh, select a new prime minister. Is it going to be Boris Johnson? Uh, he's currently the front runner. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, they, they and they, they then they just talk about like how weird it is, and they highlighted like one of the guys who whose whole campaign thing seems to be going around on Twitter and making videos saying, "I'm at so and so place. I'll be here for the next few hours if you want to come talk." Oh. He's just like <laughs> going around trying hey. to talk to as many Whoa, people as possible. Wow. Speaking of news or comedy Speaking of news, news show, we have a we have a new show. Oh, we do. Yeah, yeah. What a great segue, Chris. Yeah, you did it. I did it. Actual news. That yeah. was really good, Chris. Thank you. Thank you oh, very much. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the first time anyone's clapped for me on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> maybe the first time you've been coherent. <laughs> not sarcastic clapping either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we have a new uh, show premiering on Friday on Rooster Teeth and uh, Saturday on YouTube. I'm so excited for the show. Yeah. Oh my God. It's Ca so funny. It's called Get Fact. Mm -hmm. You got to say the name. Get Fact. Get Fact. Chris. Yeah. So they'll know what to look for. Yeah. It's it's like a, a, like a, a comedy news show. It's not like super political or topical. It's more like nonsensical investigating. Uh, news topics that don't need to be investigated. <laughs> so, like the like, we have an episode about uh, children and are they replacing us or like are they <laughs> coming for us? And it's just like a deep dive into children and what are they? So it's like forty eight hours or sixty minutes, like hard hitting. Yeah, hard hitting. Yeah, journalism. Um, I like I, it. There's also been some questions about RT shorts and stuff like that, and people think that this is a replacement for it. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. it's not like we're just taking a short break to do some writing and filming for shorts and stuff like that, and yeah. this is. Going to air during that time, so you're constantly going to have awesome content. content. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. We're shooting a short on Thursday. We are. Yeah, I mean, a so lot of that. They're still happening. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that get fact stuff was so fucking funny. There yeah. was like I would stand here, you know, where you film some of it over here, and I would just stand here in the dark, like trying to stifle my laughter while, I don't while we're filming stuff. Spoil anything, but there was something that Gus was in for one of the segments. Um, where he had to be outside in a costume. Jesus, <laughs> and it was like the <laughs> coldest day of the year. And you had like these tiny little like gloves on. I was so <laughs> fucking miserable. And I just like I came up to you guys because I was filming something with you guys too. And Gus is just like, I'm so fucking cold. <laughs> it, so was, um, it was it was <laughs> literally the cold. It had been like 80 degrees the day before, and then it was the coldest day of the year the next it day. Was and like that's when we were filmed. shooting, and all of a sudden, a, we're we're almost done. We were like five minutes from finishing, and then a group of kids started playing 
outside at a playground <laughs> next to where, where we're, we're filming. Yeah. So we had to move like two blocks away. Well, we had to find a place to move yeah. to. So everyone had to be walking around. I was, yeah. I was dressed in that stupid ass costume trying to find a place for us to film. And before people start getting on us for like, oh, Texas, how cold could it be? It's like, it's cold for the time of year it was, but also for what you were wearing. Right. It's like, it wasn't even real clothes. It yeah. was like a costume. So like on that level, yes, you would have yeah. been freezing. Yeah. Anywhere else, you would have been fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I would have been fine here if whatever I would have normally worn to the office, if I'd been standing outside, it would have been fine. It's just like yeah. Yeah. wearing that costume, it was super thin. And then you're right, those gloves were like a fucking joke. Yeah. yeah. And then I think it started raining briefly too. Oh yeah, right? it was raining too. So it was like cold, wet rain. Yeah, we have a, we have a, can we do a promo? Can we do, show that? You have a clip? Like, yeah, 30 seconds. You bring a clip? Can I do that? It's like a, it's like a late night talk show. Yeah, hey. so we do clips on Off Topic all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah we roll clips every episode. You guys got that clip ready? Yeah, let's do it. That's Hell really yeah. Yeah. beautiful bean footage. Get that. You asked for nudes, we're sending news. And every minute, news breaks. That's why we kept the receipt. You need a news team you can hear, bringing you stories you didn't ask for. And no one else has the inexperience, the ignorance, or the inaccuracy. If no news is good news, then prepare yourself for a great f***ing day. Trust is earned, but that's a lot of hard work. Get fat. Hmm. You see the costume I was in. in that yeah, you do. The, Very briefly. In that, yeah. uh, I think we put it on Twitter, too, if you want to uh, skim through it slowly. Yeah, and there's another promo coming out on Twitter today, I think. Oh, yeah, one. there yeah. is. Um, there, I, I'm also not going to spoil this one. There's an episode that you guys filmed where you had a lot of makeup done to you. Oh, God. Oh, you, there's a clip of it on that. Where I didn't know that you guys were filming that day, and then I was in the office and you still had it on. And I think I legitimately had a jump scare reaction when I saw Chris. Oh, really? It was like a, Jesus it, Christ, like, it, what the fuck yeah. is wrong with you? I still have those teeth that I sometimes put on without telling people. And just like working at my desk and people come up and I smile. Oh, God. It's so unsettling. Yeah. But, it was, it's coming out this weekend. And I have a, that, that actually, somebody actually uh, made a reference to one time that uh, one of Anna's birthday parties, I, I was talking to you at uh -huh. a bar. I don't know if you remember this. And uh, it's an interesting segue because it's something I wanted to do anyway. But I asked you what you do at Rooster Teeth, and you're like, ha, ha. and I was like, no, seriously, what do you do? I don't know. And you like froze, and you're like, uh, <laughs> uh. I mean, I do lots of stuff, and I was like, name one thing, and you're like, uh. And I had the ba I was so entertained by it. Uh, I love to tell that story. But I wonder, like, what? Because I don't work with y'all. Y'all have the bungalow and that whole new mm. thing. What did? What like? What did you do today, Gus? I always wonder that. Like, what? From 10 a.m. to 9 a.m. Whatever you came in the Mondays. Work Mondays are weird for me because uh, I spend a lot of time trying to read news and organize stuff in order to get ready for the podcast. Sure. Today, though, the first thing I do is I had a meeting uh, this morning with someone uh, to take care of some administration stuff out there. Then I, what else? Let me look at my calendar. I think I spent the rest of the day. That sounds like stuff. such a fake meeting. Someone to take care of administration it's the thing, stuff uh, out there. We were talking about earlier. And gotcha. Then yeah. uh, we had the, the all hands here. Oh, uh, yeah. How was that? Oh, then I had a, that was fine. Then I had another meeting about, the podcast, and then I did some more research and reading, okay, and when, then I'm here. How yeah. about you, Chris? I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, no, uh, I, today, asked you, I asked you a second to give you time. Uh, this morning, I uh, was like prepping that show for like post. We had our get fact. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we had our editor who'd been like editing the whole show. He uh, his last day was today, so we had to transition to uh, Neil, who's editing, mm -hmm. finishing it up. So I was like getting him up speed, getting doing, you know. Yeah, Neil's the one who who's been doing all the editing on the shorts. Yeah, he's been killing it. Uh, Neil's good. He used to work for a team hunter. Yep. Yeah, and so I was just getting. We were going through stuff, getting graphics and stuff. Then we did a Twitch stream, which we're streaming on Twitch a lot now. Mm -hmm. um, I every Monday, uh, me and Blaine and John have been streaming from like twelve to two. Did that, and then we did all hands, uh, and then I was like doing all. More post stuff. I uh, got a, a couple other projects kind of in development that I was like doing edits on and kind of playing with and working on. Yeah. And then this podcast at five. I mean, definitely no such thing as a typical day for any of us, I think. Yeah. It mm -hmm. changes. As every I'm sure day. you guys understand. What's up? No such thing as a typical day. No, not at all. That's why I'm, I'm just genuinely curious about like how y'all fill your days because like yeah. my day is different every day. Yeah. Like the, what, the day I had today will be very different from the day I have tomorrow. Yeah. I feel like it's either meetings or filming or a combination of both. Yeah. And, like, I, you know this too from being in like a more kind of like administrative kind of role or like managerial. Managerial or yeah, really executive, yeah. Um, it's just like so many goddamn meetings. 
about everything all the time. Well, I prom- I put Trevor in the role to take those meetings away, so I don't have to do them as much anymore. But I have yeah. just as many meetings, but they're like meetings that I want to have now, as yeah. opposed to meetings that I have to have, True. which is nice. Yeah, and I think for, for me, Mondays are the most consistent day because I know. Like at four, at four yeah. o'clock, you know, even though we start the podcast at five, at four o'clock, I'm going to be sitting here. So it's like, I try to get everything lined up, mm. yeah. ready. That way, when I sit down at four. Thursdays and Fridays are probably my favorite days at Rich Chiefs because Thursdays are film day. That's when we film our shorts. Uh, and then Friday, we have like a group scrum where we like go over the week and like what we want to do next week mm. and stuff like that and different things we're working on and writing and, and whatnot. But then it, Friday kind of feels like a nothing day after that because people are like the shoot's done. It's like you can't really accomplish much else that week, so it feels almost like a more relaxed day. I, I feel weird because sometimes, like, people in that office will hang out kind of in front of my door, and they'll like, oh yeah, they'll talk out there, and I feel like an asshole when I have to close my door. Like sometimes, <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's loud. Well, you say that I'm literally right next to where they stream. Mm. Oh shit! Yeah, and I'm right next to the kitchen. Yeah. So I'm like, I always close that. I close my door all the all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Because you're usually writing and stuff like that, too. Yeah. So it's like, just I don't know. It, there's no good place to really be where you don't have people talking. Right. No. I think we yeah, need that. Uh, anywhere from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And Rushdie's is nice and quiet. Yeah. Nine? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. No one comes in before 10. 10 is yeah. the correct answer. Oh, I thought you meant 9 was too late. No. Jeremy and I run by 9 every day. I, I love other. coming in at like 9 or something because it's like... It's so quiet. I'm normally alone in the bungalow or in the in the other office. That should yeah. come yeah. over and hang out with you in the mornings before everybody gets in. Yeah. We can have Gus and Jeff time. Normally, I, I'm drinking coffee and answering email. That's Dude, like... I did, I drank some coffee today. As a part of my day, the first thing I did today was we have uh, we're doing a. Fuck, I don't know if I, I. I never know what you're not allowed to talk about and what you are. Can you, you be know, like, like vague I, about it? Uh, we're doing like a coffee thing. A oh. hunter is doing a coffee thing. Yeah, and um. So I got to go and like taste test coffee and talk to a guy about coffee for like two hours. That's it was pretty cool. Fucking awesome. I'm very excited. Film it to like a little it. documentary. I made the best cup of coffee I've ever made today. How did you do it? Really? Yep. I made a lavender latte with the little the espresso machine. You made one for me one time. I did. The it, the one I had today was perfected. It was a little too strong in the lavender. I think the one you yeah. made me. So I think mm. you're perfected. How do you make? Sucked. How do you how do you do that? Well, I use that 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 fancy coffee machine that Bernie had got. You know the, it's the like an silver espresso. one. Yeah. I do that. So you used an espresso and you made the best cup of coffee of your life? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a latte, at? it's a latte, it's a latte, it's a latte. Uh, so it's like you steam so milk. So the machine made it. Ste- well, I, someone has to operate the machine. It was his combination. I, I, I steam the milk, I add some lavender syrup, <laughs> and then I, I did some espressos. I, but I got the perfect consistency. How do you say it? Lavender. No, la- no, the, the coffee part? Espresso? Es- espresso. Did he he was say- saying espresso. I know, he I've was. done that. I feel like that's the most common fuck up that people do. So many people say espresso. Espresso. Yeah. It's cool though. It's like, it sounds more exciting than espresso. I can't say. Espresso yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited about E3? At it, all? It's a hard yeah, turn. Yeah, I think I am. I forgot that it was even happening. I watched. I came into work today and everybody was like, what about all the press conferences? And I was like, Halo what? I didn't, I, I had completely slipped my mind. I watched all of them. E3 I've was watched happening. all I, I think I missed actually, I missed the PC conference because I had a, that, a meeting in the afternoon so I couldn't oh, see Oh yeah. It. Nah, it's it's been so under my radar. I think uh, it's been good so far. I yeah, don't, yeah. I think twenty 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 is when the Project Scarlet comes out, yeah. right? That's the new Xbox. Mm-hmm. That's it's not a new. It's not like an X or an S. It's a whole new console. New, next, they refer to it as next generation. Next generation. So it's like, is there going to be a PS Five then? Yeah, they've already, and and Sony's already released technical specs mm-hmm. for what that would be as well. I don't think I've seen anybody or the internet react to anything as crazy as they did with Keanu Reeves popping up. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was that all like insane reaction. Yeah. But what was so? It's just Keanu Reeves. I think people in a he, video Keanu Reeves game. is having like a moment. Like he's really. He's always. I guess he's had a perpetual moment. More so than normal. I think it's because maybe it's John Wick. And I don't know enough about E three. Like I haven't seen enough of the press conferences and, and events that they have. But is it very not typical for a real like actor celebrity to be showing? I mean, up? you'll have them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a big deal when Norman Reedus did the PT stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Or. Death Stranding. Well, I, I wonder. Uh, John, what's his name? John Bernthal in the Ubisoft. John Bernthal, yeah. Uh, today, I, I, I just it just seems to fit. Kind of seems like a yeah, like a good yeah. fit for that. He, I mean, like, it's, it's John Wick. He's he's also um, I got that Netflix movie, The Always Be My Maybe. That he's in. He's in that. I don't know that. Yeah, he's he's he not was... he's not uh, a star. He's got a c- couple of scenes, which he's he's really good. He's he's uh, I think my favorite part of that movie. 
Uh, but I think, like, I was trying to think about it last night or this morning. And it's like, I think his moment and his popularity right now, and hear me out. I know it's going to sound weird. I think this is all springboarded off of the sad Keanu memes. I was, I was wondering that. Memes. I was like, what is a <clears throat> meme? How does that affect someone's right. like, popularity? Because I think you know, Keanu Reeves is always big, right? He had the Matrix. I mean, he had a really great career. Bill, he had a huge career in the 80s. But I think that, you know, there was a period of time where either by choice or whatever, like he wasn't in, he wasn't as high profile as he is now. When would and you I think put that period sad, of time? That's like when the sad Keanu was ha- was You think like post big. Matrix, pre John Wick? Yeah. That era? I, I, I would agree. And I think that's when sad Keanu hit. And I think that kind of like, Brought him back I into uh, I think the, the thing that helped him have longevity in his career, aside from being a good actor who's made smart choices with his roles, is that he fucking looks thirty years old still. Mm-hmm. Like he's got an awesome genetics. You know that dude's in his fifties, mm-hmm. and he what? looks younger than he looks younger. He looks Chris's age. Yeah, he's looked he Chris's really age does. for the How old entirety. Thirty five, thirty six. I'm thirty two. Thirty. Th- are you he's that a- young? Yeah, he's Ugh. Keanu Reeves will like turn four when we hired you. <laughs> Keanu Reeves will turn fifty-five this summer. Yeah, when did I first meet you? You were like fifteen or sixteen. Fifteen or sixteen. Maybe? I know I met Gus when I was fifteen or sixteen. What was the first time we met? Was it RBBTO or probably? I thought I knew you before then. Well, I mean, it's, it's just like knew of we knew each other, yeah. but like in person, I don't know. Maybe it was. I'm about to turn thirty. That's crazy. Yeah. So I've known you guys for half my life officially. That's a lot. Yeah. Yes. It's. I feel like there's a weird thing too. I was talking some. There's people who, when they grow up, and like they they hit. There's like a thing where some people get super old, super fast. Yeah. And there's some people who are just like they just maintain like consist- like in terms of the way they look. They, they look and also their lifestyle. I think lifestyle also has to do with the way people look. Yeah. There are three people that fit that category to me that I always think about. Keanu Reeves is the first one. The second one is Robert Downey Jr. Um. I mean, granted, he's starting to show his age now, but he looked really young for a really long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And the other one is Paul Rudd. That's Scar Ram. I was going to bring that up. Scar Paul? Rambo in chat was talking about Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd is 80. <laughs> yeah. Paul Rudd was born in 1912. He is so young looking. The one that gets me, and I know he, like, he's, he's clearly yeah. old and looks old, but not this old, is um, William Shatner. Shatner's old. How old dude. do you think he is? He's in his eighties. Yeah, I know he's really. He's, he's like eighty six. I want to say. Yeah. He's like yeah. approaching ninety. That guy. Yeah. I thought he was like early seventies. Blocked me on Twitter. Yeah, he what? did. Why? Why did you block you on Twitter? Fucking, it wasn't even my fault. Oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> All right, let me read this and I'll, I'll tell you why William Shatner <laughs> blocked me on Twitter. Uh, this episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by Hims. Uh, I get lots of compliments on how thick my hair is, and it's good to know that there's something out there to help guys who are afraid of losing their own hair. Uh, did you know that 66% of men start losing their hair by age 35? That's two out of every three men on the planet. The thing is, when you start to notice hair loss, it's too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair that you've lost. Hims is helping guys out with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. Hims was created by someone who knows some men's health conversations are easier online than in person. No more awkward in-person doctor's visits or long pharmacy lines. Hims is completely confidential and discreet. You just answer a few quick questions a doctor will review, and if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. You can get the hair loss treatment everyone is talking about. So order now. Our viewers and listeners can get started with the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just five dollars today, right now, while supply lasts, and subject to doctor approval. You can see the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. So go to slash rooster 5 That's f o r h i m s dot com slash rooster five. Forhims.com slash rooster five. Thank you, Hims, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Podcast. While you're in that, somebody in the chat had another good one. Fucking Pharrell. Pharrell Williams. How old is he? He's in his late 40s or 50s. Mm. Look, if you look He's him been up. around for a while. Yeah. <clears throat> he was like, old when he came onto the scene. I don't He's, like no women are part of this. <laughs> He's scared. Susan Sarandon. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Crawford. Sydney Crawford. Sydney Crawford looks amazing. Yeah. Pharrell's 46. Yeah. She's also. 46. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. Um, okay. He looks like he's about 20. For real? It's very good. So I went, I did a panel at the, um, ATX Television Festival a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And on the panel with me were um, some writers for like some TV shows and like some actors and stuff. And it, we got to the point where we were talking about social media usage. And one of the actors commented on how there's a, he, I forget how he phrased it, but he said something like, there's always some, there's always like a bigger actor out there who will sometimes look at a smaller actor online and then focus like hate at them. Hmm. via social media outlets and then the person sitting next to that actor said oh i've had that too 
And the person sitting next to me who was um, a writer for, uh, he's the, the showrunner for Bones, said, oh, y'all are talking about William Shatner, aren't you? What? And uh, they all go, yeah, we are. And they're, they're all like, yeah, they're, they're like all sharing like, these horrible William Shatner stories where like William Shatner just like, just start berating them on Twitter or on social media. Oh my God. And then one of them was like, yeah, I, I blocked him on Twitter. Then he found my Facebook page. He started sending me messages on Facebook. What? Just like berating me. I was like, and I, like, I didn't, I didn't have any William Shatner stories, right? So I'm like, I was like, well, I'm glad I'm not you guys. William Shatner's never <laughs> noticed me. So then one of them looks at the audience. He goes, everyone tweet at William Shatner right now. And tell him that he should uh, he should send a message to uh, to Cirola at yeah. Cirola. I was like, no, 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 don't he's anybody out, do that. Out. It's okay, it's fine. And, and they did, I'm sure. Yeah, and of course, some people did. And then the next day, uh, <laughs> William Shatner tweeted at all of us and was like, "Don't think I didn't hear the, about what y'all were saying about me." And then he, I was blocked. That was That's it. That's so funny. Why does he give a shit about? I don't know. I didn't say anything. It wasn't my fault. I was just sitting there. But that's such a weird thing to be focused on. But at why all. does he care about? Yeah, people's opinion, like people he doesn't know his opinions of him, like in terms of. Don't think I didn't hear. Like if you were William <laughs> Shatner. Shatner has eyes <laughs> everywhere. Like Look at that. Oh my god, you are blocked. That's wow. really funny. Why do, something like someone like William Shatner, I don't know why he would care about that stuff. Like he's so famous. Uh I think Shatner has I don't want to get blocked here, but based <laughs> on my history with the Howard Stern show where um Shatner's on all the time, but then so are other people from Star Trek. Yeah. Uh obviously um uh uh what's his face? Uh George K is a big part of the Stern show, so they Talk about Shatner a lot. I think he has kind of like famously thin skin. Really? Yeah. Well, Shatner, if you're listening it's to this, I, I respect you. No, don't uh, you don't even don't, mention him. My parents. You're gonna went get us to all McGill. blocked. Don't do it. We you're all went to the same school. I read every tech war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was that was it. I listened to your spoken word album in high school. <laughs> I saw. Uh, t- I got, I told you guys the story of uh, Christopher Lloyd when I met him for the first time. I think you did. How yeah. it it was um. Me and Aaron Zek were at Supernova. You guys have been before. Okay. And on that trip, what they do is for all the guests that they have at the con, they put them all at the same hotel and they shuttle them on a bus to the convention. So everyone kind of like, essentially it's like big summer camp for all the special guests that were there. And Christopher Lloyd was one of the guests that was going to be at this con. And me personally, I don't really care about getting photos with celebrities or, or meeting them or whatever. I but avoided at all costs. It, me too. Um, but my younger brother is like a huge Back to the Future fan. And I was like, he's going to be here. Like, I could probably just like ask for a quick snap and like send it to my little brother. I think he would think that was cool. Um, so we're all waiting in the hotel lobby to get picked up. Everyone's kind of hanging out and just chatting. And he's with two people. I think one of the people is like his agent and someone else is maybe a handler of some sort for him. And I go up to him and I go, hey, um, I'm sorry to bother you, but um, my younger brother is like a huge fan of Back to the Future, and I was wondering if I could just cla- uh, grab a quick photo with you. And he, like, kind of stands there looking at me, and the people who he's with are also looking at me, and then they look back to him and back to me, and I'm just, like, awkwardly standing there. It feels like this is five minutes. And then he looks to, I guess, his agent, and he goes, uh, maybe later. And I just go, Cool man, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Sorry about you. Like, I wanted to kill myself at that point. Um, it was horrible. And so we were just at a convention a couple weeks ago where he was going to be a special guest there, and I was just like avoiding eye contact with him at all costs. I know he doesn't remember that moment, but I do. You do. And I was like, I don't want to do that again. I'm just going to avoid him and not talk to him, even if he's nice. Like, I just. And that is why I will never. I mean, mine is because of the Charles Barkley story, but. Uh, that I've told a million times, but that's why I would never do it because now anytime you see Christopher Lloyd in a movie, you're gonna be like, oh fuck, I, that was embarrassing. And like, I don't. Oh, luckily, still, you can't really see him in a movie. Anymore, I don't so think doesn't. anything <laughs> less of him. I think he was just maybe in a confusing position because he didn't know we were also guests at the con, yeah. and maybe he thought like because he's doing photo ops at the convention and people pay for those, and it's like this awkward thing that his agent would be mad about. So I don't think he's an asshole. It was just embarrassing, and that's it. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. I got turned down. Oh, earlier, a bunch of people were asking in uh, the, the my shirt. People were asking about my shirt. It's a Jeff shirt. It's coming out this summer. It's part of the summer stuff. So just I like that a lot. Look for it on the store teasing eventually. It. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't realize I was teasing it until I looked down. But yeah, roll the clip. No. <laughs> There's no clip. No clip. Oh. I saw. Um, I'm always amazed. I feel like sometimes you know I sit down and I think about 
the technology we have or the things that we use. And it's like, it's sometimes like if you think about it, it's like, wow, we live in the future. Like from when I was a little kid, like we have this, some of this cool stuff. You can talk to people on your doorbell. Like the Ring yes. doorbell. This podcast brought to you by Ring. Um, <laughs> uh, but I saw something the other day on YouTube that really made me feel like that looks like that's the future. Where it was this device that Panasonic made where you can sit down and it's a mirror, right? And you, it's, it's a mirror that's intended like a vanity so you can put makeup on, right? Mm -hmm. But this mirror looks at your face and it scans your face and it detects whatever, it detects imperfections, quote unquote, on your face. And then what it does is after scanning your face, it prints out a custom little piece of makeup that you can apply to your face. So it's like if you want to cover blemishes like or birthmarks, right. It's like you don't have to apply the makeup yourself. It prints out a fake face you can put over your face. What? Like if you want to put all your makeup on at once. Wait, like like uh, the fucking Simpsons makeup gun? Yeah. So what like, the fuck? What, but how does it know what color your face is? Like, because it, it scans it. it. But like, there's like white balance and like all these. But it's like a a mask you put on. You can see she's applying it right there. It's like you just put water on it and then like almost like, like a temporary tattoo kind right, of right. And it covers up like she had freckles and she didn't want them anymore, so she covered them up. Oh my god! With this thing that got it printed. printed a new face. It printed part of a face to like do cover do, it like, up. Eyeliner and stuff like that. Too, I don't think it's it that complicated just yet. Skin. But like that guy wanted that covered up, and so he got like something printed out and oh my god, and covered it. It's like and I, I looked at that and it's like that seems like something like you would see like in a sci-fi movie where yeah. it's like some you know someone wakes up in the morning like oh shit I'm late for work gotta you know gotta, gotta print my face. Print my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you can have a bunch printed. You could just be in the car and just be like, <clears throat> yeah, damn, that is weird. What is I'm, lo I'm looking at it now. This was posted on this this. Channel back in March. This video has four thousand views. That's it. Like forty three hundred views. Do you do you have a moment you think of like we're living in the future moment when you like outside of that that you would like a go to because you there's one that you and I have or that I have with you that you may not realize, which is we when we used to watch the fucking serial experiments. Lane, uh, I thought I was thinking she about had that the navi. You remember yeah, that yeah. little thing? It's a phone. It's an iPhone. Or yeah. an iPad, or an iPad Mini, and you and I used to talk about like, can you imagine living in a world someday where we can walk around and look at the internet and talk on the phone and play video games and do all of the things that she does just on her Navi yeah. and always be connected, just walking around Tokyo like that? We were so close to that, we had no idea. We were like six years away. I was funny. I was thinking about serial experiments, Lane. Uh, Brian said we had a anime deep cut coming out. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was uh, at a coffee shop the other day and I was walking out and I was looking at the power lines. Mm -hmm. and I remember like, oh yeah. I, mean, I was looking at the power lines in Austin. I was like, oh yeah, I remember like how much that was like part of the theme of the show and like seeing all of that stuff. And I haven't, I haven't watched that show since it came out on DVD. What was that? Like 2001? I haven't watched anime since I lived with you. Yeah. yeah. It's been a, been a long been a time. Minute. Power lines. The if you touch them, do you get shocked? Are they like if you're grounded? Yes, right? if you're like, grounded. So they anything could just like they're, they're just active electricity that you could someone could fucking a bird hits it. Do they get shocked? No, because no, they're, they're not, not grounded. grounded. They're not grounded. I saw a video of someone with uh, some balloons, a, a big thing of balloons that hit some power lines it, and they blow up. It's because they were hitting multiple lines. Oh, so they. The balloons right. hit between it's, the lines, so it like mm -hmm. okay. so the charge jump between lines. Oh, yeah. I saw that too. They released all those mylar balloons in a parking yeah, yeah. lot, and it was oh, it, shit. it was, yeah. oh, it was that. Oh my and god! I was like, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> goes dark. holy shit! <laughs> I bet all those cars melted. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, and I was like, all right. So how is that not happening all the time? Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. When you guys are saying the new season of Love Island started, do you mean the U.S. Love Island or the British Love the Island? The British Love Island is the only Love Island. Well, I haven't seen the U. No, the Australian Love Island is better than the British. But it you just can't watch it in America. It's impossible. What oh, is it? I, I've been watching the UK Love Island. The UK Island. Love Island's amazing. I've seen the all four seasons. I need, I think, really? I've seen every episode of all four seasons. I watched the one randomly because I just needed something dumb to, like, mindless watch. Yeah. And I turned on season three of it, and I'm like, I've been watching through it. Season three's a good one. hour-long episodes, there's 50 of them. So here's what you can, a pro tip, if you're interested in Love Island... <laughs> But you don't need to get that granular with it, but you just want to get the like the broad strokes. Yeah. Every seventh day they have a recap episode. Right, I skip those. And so yeah, well the recap episodes can be interesting because they have unseen footage and stuff. But if you can also just watch the recap episode oh. and skip the other six and watch a season in like 
six hours. What is yeah. Love Island? Love Island is a show that started in the UK. There's also one in Australia. They're bringing it to America. Uh, where it's one of those shows where it's a reality show where the audience gets to vote on the people in the show. And um, so they do like live voting, but they take like six sexy single girls and six sexy single guys. And they're always in bikinis, like and for they, the entirety of the they show. They go to a, like a castle, like a castle, like a, a mansion on the, the villa, a villa in like the Caribbean somewhere or like uh, south of France or somewhere. And they have to, they're t tasked with falling in love and finding their love match. And so they then couple they, up. They, par they couple up. It, actually, the way they do it is quite brilliant and disgusting, um, but super fascinating to watch. It's very disgusting. It, it alternates from season to season, but like the first episode is literally like six dudes will stand in front of a pool and they'll parade a woman out and they'll put her like in the shallow end of the pool and they go, this is Megan. Does anyone want to, if you want to date Megan, step forward. Or if you are interested in if Megan. If you're interested in Megan, step forward. And like four dudes will step forward. The one I and watched, then, it was reverse. It was the and they, they do it reverse from season to season. Sometimes it'll be the men, sometimes it'll be the women. Uh, and then uh, and then that's how they couple up. But sometimes six people will step forward because the guy is really hot or the girl's really hot or nobody will step forward. I've and that person just has to fucking steps. stand there while nobody wants to date him. And then whoever's left over has to date him. And then they're coupled up and they go through like... Just like a reality show, they have to do like couples challenges, you know, or they have to like the do sack races and shit as a couple. Yeah, yeah. and then you know, couple the, stuff, couple, yeah. like whatever dumb stuff they make you do, like on a reality show, uh, like you kiss, like drink a bunch of Kool Aid and then spit it in your partner's mouth, Ooh. and they have to put it in a pitcher, yeah. and whoever fills or the like pitcher cover first. Cover your partner in hot dogs. Cover your partner, yeah, like dumb, just dumb shit. Yeah. But uh, and then every couple days they'll have a coupling ceremony, and then America will or do you care whoever votes on who their least favorite couple is and those people are gone oh. and at the end the couple that survives to the end it, I'm, I'm not even close they to done by the way bringing in new i'm people. not even close to done yeah because there's <laughs> it's there's it's so complex it so is. how do people vote it is it like whoever, you vote on your cell phone yeah, yeah. but i mean like how there's do people no, there's select no criteria right like what, it's who you like it's, or who you like. it's a popularity like, contest okay. or yeah. like but but it's because you're watching it like some people are strategic and they're like yeah we're gonna screw them over or whatever and then the audience is like i fucking hate that guy he's a bad guy she's a mean girl whatever um and so the people are trying to like trick the other cast members but also endear themselves to the audience so it's kind of multi-layered but then also sometimes the show will just throw curveballs and uh, vote people off. The show will vote people off and just say, like, you're gone or whatever. But they'll also, they'll just, they'll go, uh, oh, also, we have a surprise for you tonight. There are three new guys coming in, and two of them are going to stay. Figure out who who the two that get to stay are. And then the, the Love Island people will get to pick who gets to stay yeah. and leave. And one episode I watched in season two or three, uh, they brought in, like, ten new guys, ten new people. And they're yeah. like... Then Here's they ten entirely new people. Two different villas with that. Yeah, like and then they, they had all the like original villas and they recombine guys. them. Yeah, wow. but th so it starts with twelve people. By the end of fifty episodes, there might have been thirty to forty people who have cycled through. Yeah, and it's really interesting. And it's what one of the things that's really interesting is all those new people very rarely get to stay. The people that are like the original twelve are really it, w it, w it winnows down to like the like a seven or eight pretty quickly. Those people form a pact and they just don't let anybody else in. Yeah, which is smart. Yeah, it is smart, but it's interesting. And so, like, yeah. e they the, the people get hotter each week, and they just have to find a reason not to like them or to convince the audience not to like them so they can stay because it becomes less about winning and more just like being on the show as long as possible. I have two favorite things about the show one is that, unlike other reality shows similar, like The Bachelor, mm -hmm. where there's like a camera crew and whatever, they have cameras just placed everywhere, and they're constantly wearing these like lavalier microphones on yeah, them. Yeah, they have like lavs because they're in bikinis or. Like, yeah, whatever. So you they, never see camera packs. crews because it's just like they're constantly being filmed everywhere, even in their bedrooms. It's like mm -hmm. Big Brother. Like, it's like very invasive. And they fuck a lot and they fight a lot and they encourage, like all reality shows, they just shovel alcohol yeah. down their throats Damn. all day and all night long. And, and it's insane. Watching the UK version, I've never realized how badly I understand certain UK accents. It, you're just watching and you're like, all right, yeah, this this bra comes in, she's right fit. <laughs> yeah, when you and, get uh, like, you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to dump my girl for her because she's right fit. Yeah, when you get some of some of the <laughs> chattier good. people in there, yeah. it's like it can be really hard to fucking understand what they're saying. Talking so fast. Yeah, I've had to put subtitles on. Before. But so there's one in Australia. I like the one in Australia better because the people are even hotter and dumber in Australia. Um, <laughs> but there's one that just started in the U.S. There's also, I'm deep on reality TV. If you like Love Island, Tempted, new season of Temptation Island was Temptation fantastic. Island, yeah. Paradise Island, or Paradise Hotel is going on right now. I just started that. That's a really good one. I'm only three episodes in. Dude, you're speaking my language. Yeah. On this. I love, like, it, I recognize that these shows are so bad. 
but they are so perfectly mindless and entertaining in that way. It is the only way I can turn my brain off from yeah, work. Same. Yeah, I, uh, I or like Vanderpump be, Rules, which I watch really. I got contacted about being on a reality show one time. Oh no, I was thinking about one that Aaron and Blaine got contacted oh, no, about. No. What yeah, show? Naked dating. <laughs> Did something? you really naked yeah. and afraid or something? Naked I don't, dating. Dating. Naked I don't dating. know. I don't know. I don't remember. It was some naked romance <laughs> reality show. Why didn't it, you do it? Uh, I, I I started filling out the application. It was a long time ago. It was like when we were at six three six, and then I started filling out the application. But it was like there was too many like restrictions. Dating naked. Dating naked might have been that. Yeah, it's just like I think a friend, someone I had gone to co college with, was working in their. Uh, Casting agency was like, hey, so and so re referred to you as a as a good naked dater or something. I don't know. Y yeah. Years ago, when we were still in the Buda apartment, do you remember Naked News? Yes. I remember you wanting desperately to be on Naked yeah, News. They contacted us and they wanted to do a news story I about Rooster Teeth. Sneaking, watching that show because I was way too young to be watching <laughs> that show, and I was just like, ooh, it's scandalous. They wanted to do a story about Rooster Teeth, and I said the only way. Uh, we would do it is if I got to be naked at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't did. do it. They wouldn't fucking come. To, they wouldn't do the I goddamn interview. That, yeah. unless, Have you guys ever if I was naked. seen or heard of the show called, I believe it's called Naked Attraction? It's yes, another show. It's a UK show. That, that's UK, what, yeah. That show's phenomenal. Secreties when or something. You're chat just said. In, the, in Europe or in the UK and you're just like flipping through channels and all of a sudden it's like, there are dicks. Dude, lots Sorry, and lots of dicks. You can see like inner flap. Yeah, it's crazy. But <laughs> Jesus, ha, are, have you? Do you know what the show is? I thought you asked if I knew what inner flap was. No, I don't. Barbara, maybe you could explain it better than me. But it's, it's insane. It, it, okay, I'm gonna try to explain it as simply as possible. Basically, there's one person. It's either a guy or a girl who's like the contestant, and they have twenty or thirty. Six. Twenty. Six people? Six people. It's six people. It's way more than that. I've only ever seen it six. It's like the six booths that raise up from the bottom. Oh, I've seen it being like 30. Oh, I've never seen it be that many. People. I've only seen it be six. Um, where I don't think you see the person's face. You just see their literal entire naked body. Oh, oh, I think you showed me a clip of this. It's just, yeah, yeah. You just see their face and you have to like decide if you're gonna date them or no, something? You don't see them. You don't you see don't their see face. face. No, no, that's what I meant, the opposite, yeah. But you literally, it's like, it'll be a guy going, well, I, I do like big boobs, I'm a boob man, and hers are, they look like double Ds, but they're very malformed, and this girl, she's a B cup, but it's a very perky B, and I guess, and, and they're just having like a very like nonchalant. Yeah. Like they're picking a piece of meat at the butcher. Yeah, very seriously, much, or yeah. like a girl being like, yeah, I like I prefer circumcised guys, and his he's, balls are he's a little, like, hanging hang a little. And he's, He's got a big dick, but it's discolored. I don't know. And then eventually they narrow it down each as it goes up. And they're like, out of all the knees, which knee do you like the least? And they're like, oh, those gross knees. Oh, like, so they slowly, you they don't slowly, see everything yeah, yeah. at first. No, oh. it's a process. And then you pick somebody and then they come out naked. And then that person has to then disrobe and come out naked so they can meet each other naked. And they go on a date clothed. It's just, it's so weird. It's weird. But, but entertaining. It kind, of, it kind of demystifies nudity. Right, a, which I feel like is more way. of a European thing. Yeah, it's like, when I thought it, I was like, oh, cool, beat off material. It's totally not. Mm -mm. You, it's not in the least. Um, I can't imagine off beating off for that show. But it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm 43, I can't imagine beating off anyway, but it's, uh, <laughs> none of that stuff works anymore. But uh, it's, especially uh, not after the, the jalapenos. <laughs> especially not after the jalapenos. God. Uh, but it's just like, it's really interesting, like, just how matter of fact they are. And it airs on, like, prime time in the UK. Yeah, I think it was, on, like, six or seven Millie could watch it. Uncensored. Yeah. Uncensored. Yeah, completely uncensored. Uncensored. Yeah. uncensored. Yeah. You will see every bit of a human's body. Wow. Have, have you ever seen, speaking of seeing a human's body, have you ever seen embarrassing bodies? Yes. No. You'll every see, you'll, every you'll day see. I shower. Every day I shower. <laughs> That's like a, a story where, or not a story, it's a, it's a British show where people have like something strange about their body and they want to talk to a doctor about it. They can, and you get to see it. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Like weird growths or whatever. It's like. Or some weird condition. Yeah. It's or... like, I've got this thing in my butthole. I don't know what it is. Okay, <laughs> let's look. I think, is and it like they get free health care for or like treatment of it if well, they agree yeah, to be on the show like they already have nhs obviously but it's like right. this is like they could see like a private doctor or like get you know get bumped special up, get, treatment get for it right get it taken care of immediately do do people still like jerk off to stuff that's not just porn let's absolutely like, do, you wanna, well, do we want to run a poll on that eric I'm sure people have well, jacked off to this table. Let me let me read this before we get that poll up because okay. we're gonna we're gonna go we're about to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, want to remind everyone this episode of the Receive Podcast is also brought to you by HelloFresh. Uh, you ever have recipe rut, cooking the same meals day after day? You know there are a ton of options out there, but where do you start? HelloFresh is a meal delivery kit 
a service that shops, plans, and delivers step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can cook, eat, and enjoy. You get seasonal, simple recipes, pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door every week. With HelloFresh, cooking is enjoyable and easy. Enjoy fun menu features with HelloFresh's dinner to lunch, 20-minute meals, one-pot wonders, and more. All meals come together in 30 minutes max, call for less than two pots and pans, and require minimal cleanup. And you can get uh, out of that recipe rut, start cooking outside your comfort zone by discovering new delicious recipes. I uh, like how easy the recipes are. Uh, they have got some great choices of meals. Also, like they said, the cleanup is super easy. Like they said, I've done it before. Use I'll use maybe one, two pots. Then when you're done, just clean it up so quick. Uh, spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping. You can get that time back to do more of what you love. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash RTP80 and enter RTP80. It's like receiving eight meals for free. So get $80 off your first month. Go to HelloFresh.com slash RTP80 and enter RTP80. Uh, thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. So how did you phrase that question? So do people, do people off? still jerk off to stuff that isn't straight porn? What, oh, no, no, no. No, and I say straight. I, I mean, you, I like. I mean, just, just, just not purely, like purely straight porn. I just mean, people yeah. having sex. On yeah, camera. that's not just porn. As opposed, to like, oh wow, like, I because I, I when I was a kid before, like, the internet got as fast, and like, I, I jerked off to everything. I would jerk off to the Fuzzy Channel on HBO. Yeah, it was porn, but it was yeah. fuzzy. Yes, like you'd, you'd, that. I would jerk off to uh, the Howard Stern show when they'd bring out. You know, Howard's, or, Howard's Howard's Channel Nine show, yeah, yes, or, or, or Girls Gone Wild infomercials. I would, oh yeah, when like, people I would wait for those commercials and be like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I gotta. <laughs> were you like edging the whole time waiting <laughs> for a fucking commercial to come and on? Then, and then, or or I mean, magazines like uh, what are uh, what is Cosmopolitan? Cosmopolitan, Con yeah, in, the any, one where they talked about like different. Yeah, any magazine with like Sex girls things? in their underwear. Sears right, catalog. You, you yeah. It's a go joke, but it's true. Com slash play. If you're uh, watching live, yeah, I, I got I got one. I used to jerk off the Harlequin romance novels. Yeah, what, what's what's yeah. a Harlequin romance novel? What? What is that? You don't know what a Harlequin romance no. novel is? Oh yeah, I think Harlequin's just like the brand or the company that okay. produces them, but it's like romance novels. It's always like like Fabio on the cover, yeah, and like yeah, a yeah. Woman those on are like you just open it up, find a sex page, and just read three pages and be like, I could be off to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yep. weird. I remember. If, oh, I don't know. Did tell you us. read just, Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Yeah, no, I haven't read it. Chris, you're talking. Uh, I'm going to exclude Barbara from this, but you're talking to two dudes who are older, old enough to have been jerking off before the internet existed. Well, no, but I, no, I was asking sorry, like I, was I asking you were there again. The more broader, <laughs> like, like, I, okay. I'm trying to think of the last time I like jerked off to something that wasn't porn. I literally got a. I saw and, like someone's like cleavage the other day, and I like got me going. Yeah, well, and it can happen. Like. I think I was watching uh, an HBO show, like an older HBO show, and there was like a Red Shoe uh, Diaries, huh? <laughs> that, that, you, was that HBO or Showtime? Was that HBO or Showtime? Love Island. I, used, I definitely used to masturbate to that. Uh, but I real I, sex. I, it was, it was like an older HBO show. Uh, I think it was um, uh, Game of Thrones. No, with the. Uh, Pacific, and there was like a hot kind of sexy. The, you jerked off watching the Pacific. <laughs> there was a nude. There was a nude scene. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what was there was a sex scene. Okay, it wasn't I don't know. There was a sex scene. I was like, well, that's kind of hot. And then I was like, are, and I didn't jerk off to that scene, but it inspired me to go jerk well, off. I, I do want to point out this poll is a lot more one sided than I expected <laughs> it to be. Dude, we're looking at like 250 people voting. Yes, they jerk off to stuff that isn't just porn. That's insane. Uh, I mean, we got, whatever gets you off. Go for it. If you want it, like real deep, this is, I think this is too old for you because I'm a little bit older than You're you. But then I'm, than me. Yeah, but I'm older, older than you okay. too. Um, <laughs> do you remember Dream On or First and Ten? I do remember Dream On. I used to jerk off the Dream On and First and Ten because Dream On had, a, had a, every episode there were tits. In every single that, episode there was at least one HBO, set of tits. That was right? It was HBO. It was Martin and his friend and every episode some girl got naked and I jerked off to that and then also First and Ten because there was Man, always nudity in that I, I didn't have HBO when Dream On was on the air, but a friend of mine did. So whenever we had sleepovers, I would always want to watch Dream On, but it's like, you can't jerk off when it's like you're at when a your sleepover there, with yeah. your friend in the same room. I have a question for you guys. D okay. Do you need to see both tits in order to get riled up, or like, is just one tit enough? I can think about them and be fine. Yeah, like, I, if I, one I, I tit can, is hanging out? I'm okay with one. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the other, it's, you can almost like, you can, you can figure out what the other one looks like roughly. Well, you don't you have to. Like, <laughs> yeah, Maybe probably. But do like, you remember that period of time when every time we left the office, you would see homeless lady boobs? Yeah. 
<laughs> I remember that. That's what Gus jerked off. So uh, that I think wasn't we're, we're done with the poll. We're, we're, it's obvious. Uh, Pretty, even people, 75, 25. 25. people jerking off. Dude, th yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, you know, barely. I mean, we're, you know, sexually wired most of the time. So it's like anything you see that will like remind you of something. It's like, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Even if it's one boob. Even if it's just one, one boob. boob. Or just boob. the tip of a penis. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just a just mushroom. Tip. Do you think you could? Do you think you could get aroused from no, just like? Here's just, the thing: like, a, like just a penis doesn't arouse me. No. Like just no. Does like, it need to be erect? Or does flaccid work? No, flaccid doesn't work. It's like it's not an attractive look. No. Yeah. But also, just like penises in general, the like, worst. Like the idea of someone sending me a dick pic is like that. There's nothing less appealing to me. Yeah. Like I would rather, I would much rather look at a naked woman than a, a naked man most of the time. So it's more of just like being with someone that gets just me going. But like in terms of like visual, mm. Mm. I'm less about the dicks because they're just not pretty. Well, I'll give you that. No, I don't. I won't argue that point. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's a kind of a bummer. Yeah, you're like, that's all I got. Hey, speaking of dicks. Did you see that Justin Bieber wants to fight Tom Cruise? Yeah, I saw What? <laughs> yeah, he Why? tweeted some Is he weird serious? Tweet. He he tweeted that he wa uh, let me see if I can find the specific tweet, but that he wants to fight Tom Cruise like you Okay, I found the tweet from Justin Bieber. I want to challenge Tom Cruise to fight in the octagon. Tom, if you don't take this fight, you're scared and you will never live it down. Who is willing to put on the fight? He used the wrong your, by the way. Yeah, he did. Millie, you're a believer. What's going on there? <laughs> got 106 million followers. He no, didn't he even tag Justin Tom. What is the, wait? What is the octagon? It's like uh, like uh, it's when they fight in UFC. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ultimate he just wants. Wh why did he sing out Tom Cruise? I don't know, but Tom Cruise will fuck him up. <laughs> Tom Tom Cruise is a little guy. He's got a low center of gravity and he's all muscle. He also does and his like own I was, stunts, right? Yeah, and like I was saying before we started this, or maybe earlier, you don't want to fuck with a, 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 a like an older gentleman who's got dad muscles. Who's still in shape in his fifties? Those are the strongest dudes on earth. Dad yeah, like Mark Consuelos or like one of those guys, dude. Don't mess with them. Yeah, they'll get you. Plus, he's special, a special Scientologist. That would be. He's got powers. That would That's be. True. He's gonna go clear all over his ass. Mm -hmm. A fight, the entire world would watch. I would watch it yeah. because it, it it spans so many generations. It doesn't make any it, sense. That's and why. It's like, what <laughs> move over what? KSI and it's like. Tom, it's like from the 80s to now, it's like everyone wants to see them fight. Everyone wants to see Tom Cruise beat the shit out of Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who doesn't want to see that. That oh, would be man. incredible. I, God, I hope that happens. That would, that would. It'll never happen. I mean, there's no way Tom Cruise. Uh, Tom Cruise has no incentive there, to want to do that. There's like 70 layers of management between that tweet and Tom Cruise before, like, no, there's 15 it, people that would not let him do that. If I had the chance to beat up Justin Bieber, I would take it. Ooh, some Canadian hatred there. Yeah. Ooh. It has nothing to do with being Canadian. No? It has everything to do with Justin Bieber. It has everything to do with being and an American. And having one of the most punchable faces of all time. <laughs> I'm sorry if you like Justin Bieber. I, he's, I, I, he, I don't think I'm there's so a lot of, ambivalent towards that dude. I don't think there's a lot of crossover. I don't care one way or the other. I hope not. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. He had that, uh, that roast on Comedy Central, was it a couple years ago? B Bieber or Tom Yeah, uh, did, Justin Bieber. No, did Tom he really? never do that, yeah. Uh, it was like it seemed like I thought at the time that it was going to be like the start of like a new part in his career Maybe it was like turning over a new leaf and laughing about what he did, but it didn't really seem to do that at all That that's a that reminds me because I love those roasts those Friars Club roasts and then what turned into the Comedy Central roasts were pretty good There's a new show on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. That's historical roasts I've seen it. where Jeff Ross and a bunch of other yeah. people get together. I love Jeff Ross. Not very good uh, mm. Did you watch it? I watched it. I love history stuff, too, and I was like oh history and comedy Totally my thing, but yeah, I wasn't super that mediocre. Into it. Yeah, yeah, same. They were the first. I only watched the first episode, which was Abe Lincoln, and it was just like it wasn't as funny as you thought it would be. And they got perioded up, and they wore costumes, and sometimes they did voices and stuff, and it just took you out of it. You just want to see funny jokes. Yeah, I, I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. Same. And I'm like, maybe I, I was like, maybe it's just not the best episode. But I was like, I am right there with you. I'm gonna watch another one to see. But that for yeah, it was really. Disappointing because on paper it sounds amazing. Would you yeah. ever want someone to do a roast of you? I don't think anybody could roast me better than I could roast myself. Mm. Well, that makes you a good candidate for it. Yeah, I mean, people roast me all day long if you want, but you, I can insult me way worse than anybody else can. Yeah. I promise you. <laughs> I know where all this. I know where all the skeletons are buried. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I feel like.
like we, we should have talked about earlier. We got um, RTX is coming up in a couple of weeks. We're like it's three, three like weeks 24 away. 24 days away. Yeah, it's so um, close. I have to do a whole comedy special that I haven't written yet. Hey, <laughs> stand up. What better time you're, to write it. You, than you better right get before. to work on it. I'm going on vacation next week, and I was gonna and to California. I was gonna write it while I'm there, but I'm pretty nervous because I was pretty far along this time last year. How long is it? I gotta do five minutes. Last time oh. I did twelve, but I had twelve minutes of stuff. I don't have anything because I my girlfriend very correctly pointed out the other day. Uh, she was like, "What are you? What are you gonna do for the stand up night?" And I was like, "Ah, you know, I just do my thing." And she goes, "The thing you did last year?" And I go, "Well, I've done it a few times." She goes. At this event last year, at the same event at the North Door for the kind of funny comedy, With you're going to do same, the exact same set again two years audience. in a row at the exact same place, the same audience. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason to come to RTX. Hey. All yeah. new material by All Jeff. new material, yeah. Bring, bring your friends. So yeah. uh, it'll be a good time. Oh, there's a lower third. We just had a, a big round. meeting about RTX just to go over some details. And it was like very exciting that it's coming up so close. So soon. It's also so still I, so weird to go to those meetings having nothing to do with RTX yeah. anymore. <laughs> uh... It's been weird going back in, and I, I'm not doing a lot, but still just like being back in the loop and yeah, kind of knowing what's going on. You thought on. you were free. I thought I was free, but um, I, <laughs> I like this it. earlier dates. I like when we have it like right up against Fourth of July. Yeah, me yeah, too. Me too. It's fun. Yeah, so it is. it'll be a good time. Still time to come down. It's not quite as friends. hot as it is later in the summer, mm -hmm. which is actually a big thing, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's. It's one of those things where you like you feel like you spend all summer working towards it and you're stressed about it and stressed about it and then when RTX is over, summer's over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it feels like yeah, so. it's nice we'll still have a summer behind it. So it's fun. Ugh. It's like like you said, like Barbara said, twenty four days away. Oh my god, it's crazy. So soon. Get your tickets. Do it now. RTXevent.com. Um all right. Uh I think that's about it. I think we should wrap this up. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks I'm for I'm sorry it on. took so long. Gus Gus has been inviting me to the podcast for a little while, but I've had to keep saying no for other work obligations. So well, nice I'm, I'm glad we finally made it work. I am too. And anytime, anytime you want me back, I know less is more with me. So, <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> all right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, everybody. Did you like this episode of the Receive Podcast? You should click on that bell down below. That way, you get alerted whenever we have new videos. If you like this video, there's also some other videos you can watch right below here that we also made, and uh, you can like it. You can subscribe if you want. Please do. That's what we're making. We're, we're actually making this. We stayed late. This is the thirtieth take. So please.